4090 rumored to be twice more than twice as fast and let me fix this here too it's fine uh bam boom there's the article we can do this we do it every day let's go ahead and get the article going i was live streaming on twitch.tv slash blind run yesterday and have a little bit of a different setup over there of course i didn't get to stream for long because we headed over to the farm to fix a couple rigs We'll talk about that too. Um, NVIDIA's next generation GeForce RTX 4090 gaming graphics card is rumored to be more than twice as fast as the 3090, while the 4080 could be receiving a spec bump. The latest information was shared by copite 7 kimmy who stated that while the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 graphics card specifications were the same as the ones he had posted earlier, the overall performance of the card has increased tremendously and now sits at over two times the, versus the existing RTX 3090 behemoth. Behemoth. I don't know. Do you say behemoth or behemoth? How do you guys pronounce it? It's probably behemoth, I feel like. The said performance is purely rasterization, so overall performance within games should vary. But still, that's a big leap versus what the last generation had to offer. It also means that NVIDIA is putting that TDP bump to good use since we are talking about a card that's expected to feature up to 450 to 500 watts TDP out of the box. Now, for miners, the problem that we run into is two big things. One is the new ATX 3.0 specification requiring an upgrade to your power supplies for mining, of course. And in addition to that, presumably, we also have pretty much no change in the memory, albeit just with a slight memory speed bump, meaning the bandwidth is total bandwidth isn't going to be increased that much because the bus width was not increased versus the 3090. So while the performance will be a lot better from traditional rasterization perspective, meaning better in some applications and some games primarily that are going to be focused on core heavy type activities. The memory heavy activities, i.e. mining cryptocurrency, aren't going to see quite the same amount of improvements here. So you're not going to be seeing something like a double the hash rate type thing. I believe after we calculated out the predicted 4090 hash rate, you would be looking at somewhere around 150 to 175 mega hash a second, depending on how fast they get that memory up to. That's not going to compensate for the massive 150 watt pump in power consumption. So it's really going to be up there kind of questionable for a while from the mining perspective as I see it. Um, from the power to, of course, hash rate perspective, that could be changed, of course, when we start talking about slightly more core intensive algorithms, maybe something like Flux, maybe something like Ravencoin as examples of those. However, those still do rely heavily on memory performance as well. More importantly, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 is said to feature a cut-down AD102 Ada Lovelace GPU core, which means that the full variant, possibly a Titan or RTX 4090 Ti, could end up with much higher performance than the RTX 3090. This increase should also be expected, considering that we are looking at over 70% CUDA cores than the RTX 3090 Ti, plus the clock speed, which are rumored to be much higher than the current generation, thanks to the shift to the TSMC 4 nanometer process node. Remember, that's a modification of the 5 nanometer process node. It will also get a major uplift with the new architecture, which includes a meaty 96 megabytes of L2 cache versus just the 6 megabytes on the existing flagship. Now, that was one thing that we had pointed out that's extremely interesting is NVIDIA's decision to start pumping up that L2 cache. We're already aware that AMD started doing that on the RX 6000 series GPUs uh, to leverage it via their Infinity cache, kind of like Infinity Fabric setup. And it did prove out to be very, very good for traditional rasterization. However, we haven't seen any of that carry over into any sort of the crypto mining realm. If NVIDIA is also going to be bumping up these caches, these L2 caches, etc., and start utilizing those heavily, maybe we get to some point where we do see 
either some sort of new algorithm on the horizon that starts to leverage this. That would be the my best kind of hope for, of course, this new kind of push for more cash on GPUs. Or maybe we see a mining software, a piece of mining software, be able to start leveraging this sort of thing as well and bump the hash rates up in other algorithms that are currently already available. I don't know though. That's just kind of hope and rumor, right? Besides the GeForce RTX 4090, Copite 7 Kimmy also states that the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 is getting a spec update. Previously, the graphics card was rumored to feature a total board power of 350 watts, but this has now changed to 420 watts. No! Stop it! <laughs> Stop pumping those nuts. It's the wrong number. Make the memory speed go up and the power go down, guys. Killing me over here. Which is a higher board power figure than the RTX 3090. The RTX 4080 is still going to utilize the 8103 GPU, a slightly more optimized variant of the 8104. This would also mean a 100 watt higher TDP than the existing RTX 3080, so the card could end up with some really fast specs and 380 watts at the wall while mining. That's, that's... <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> we also recently reported the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 with a total uh, uh, a TGP of 220 watts. We talked about that in yesterday's video. There should be a clip coming out for it as well. So just stay tuned for that or go back and watch yesterday's video. We have that up and available for you if you want the details on the 4060 specifications. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 Ti is going to be the full fat configuration with all of the 144SMs enabled for a total of 18,432 CUDA cores. The GPU will come packed with 96 megabytes of L2 cache and a total of 384 ROPs, which is simply insane. The clock speeds are not confirmed yet, but considering that the TSMC 4 nanometer process is being used, we are expecting clocks between 2 to 3 gigahertz range. As for memory specifications, the RTX 4090 Ti is expected to rock 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X capacities that might come at a faster 24 gigabits per second across a 384-bit bus interface, which would provide up to 1.152 terabytes per second of bandwidth. That's a 10% increase of total bandwidth over the 3090 Ti, which we know can get up to maybe, I guess, at best with proper cooling, 130 mega hash a second. You take that, you take a 10% bump over that if they actually get up to 24 gigabits per second. And at the top model, really, you're just looking at getting close to about 150 mega hash a second. But of course, with these crazy power numbers uh, to, to deal with. Now, all these board or all these boosted specifications will result in higher power draw too, and the flagship is expected to operate at a total board power of around 600 watts. Also, it's important to note that if we are taking a look at the 4090, the memory specifications, there's pretty much no chance it goes over what the 3090 Ti currently is at with the 21 gigabits per second. So you can expect the 4090 to be around the 125 mega hash a second as far as it pertains to ETH. And that's provided you have adequate cooling, right? Um... Let's go. A single six pin or 16 pin Gen 5 connector should be enough, but most of the custom variants will definitely end up utilizing dual Gen 5 connectors since AIBs don't necessarily stay within spec and even the slightest of factory overclocks will push the total board power above 600 watts, which is the limit of a single 16 pin Gen 5 power connector. We also have seen an alleged RTX 4090 Ti heatsink and cooler shroud, which hints at the use of a beefier cold plate that provides coverage for both the GPU and memory dies, along with an overall larger structure. The leaked cooler is a Founders Edition design, and judging by how big it looks, the AIB models will end up being vastly bigger, and we may end up with quad slot designs from all partners. This is another hurdle for cryptocurrency miners. Already with the 3000 series, you know, your 12 by GPU open air frame turns into an eight by or a nine by, right? 
because you got these three slot cards. Um, it's going to go down even further, right? These 12 GPU air rigs that you're currently running will run down to obviously only being able to fit six of them on a, on a 12 card open air frame. So that's also going to impact, of course, designs on these server cases. And because we are in, you know, frankly, the crypto winter, the bear market, and there's a ton of uncertainty surrounding, of course, cryptocurrency mining as it pertains to GPUs, we're going to be hard pressed to find custom variants and motherboards that you slot in in the server style cases that are going to support this kind of width on these GPUs. They didn't even ever get to the point of really fixing that for like the three slot GPUs. And it's going to be extremely difficult to convert to these. Um, I just, uh, it's, it's kind of rough. Now at the lower end, of course, maybe that's not as big of a deal. Maybe the 4060 or something like that, or 4070 will be dual slot. They'll be good at mining. But as we saw, they're cutting down the bus width. Uh, pretty significantly on the 4060. It's actually going to be a smaller bus with slower speed. So yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the 4060 doesn't look uh, promising due to a cut down on the uh, bus with down to 128 bit. It's looking like the total bandwidth is only going to be around 320 gigabytes per second, which is significantly slower than both the 3060 and the 3060 Ti from a memory perspective. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 is going to be cut down configuration with either the same cores and as the existing GA102 part, but tuned with much higher frequency or between 9,000 to 10,000 or 9,000 to 10,000, I assume is what they meant cores yeah wait that allows some room for a ti variant in the future with the full fat configuration the gpu will come packed with 64 megabytes of l2 cache and up to 224 rops which is simply insane apparently they like to say which is simply insane <laughs> in this, I, I love this guy who is who wrote this article Hassan, I got to tweet at him and be like, which is simply insane. <laughs> I read your article today, it, it which was simply insane. <laughs> the clock speeds are not confirmed yet, but considering that the TSMC 4 nanometer process node is being used, we are expecting 2 to 3 gigahertz uh, range. The higher than usual clock speed bump comes from the fact that NVIDIA is making two node jumps considering the Ampere GPUs with Samsung 8, eight nanometer node was in reality a 10, 10 nanometer process node with some optimizations. NVIDIA is skipping 7 nanometer and going straight for 5 nanometer node and not even the vanilla variant but an optimized version of it. The Pascal on the TSMC 16 nanometer node, NVIDIA delivered a huge frequency leap and we can expect a similar jump this time around too. And I think that's pretty fair to say because as we saw with the RX 7000 series, we had a huge bump in the frequency and that was primarily due to the jump to seven nanometers so jumping the four nanometer means we should see of course uh, a pretty a pretty big bump so there you go so as for as for the geforce rtx 4080 is expected to rock 16 gigabytes of gddr6x capacities that may come with 21 gigabits per second speeds. That would be uh, similar to what the top variant is right now, the RTX 3090 Ti. Across a 256-bit bus interface, that's a small bus for such an expensive, high-powered card, in my opinion, but it is what it is. This will provide up to 672, 672 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, now, all these boosted specifications will result in higher power draw too, and the flagship is expected to operate a total board power of around 420 watts. Now, for 420 watts, a single 16-pin Gen 5 connector should be enough for both reference and custom models. As for the launch, the graphics card lineup is expected Q3 to Q4 of 2022, and they have a more detailed schedule there as well if you wanted to check it out. So... They have some specifications already, like we see here. The 4060, like I was talking about, 128-bit. That's pretty disappointing. Uh, as far as the 4070, 192-bit bus, only 432 gigabytes per second. 672 on the 4080. 
Um, and then once you get to the 4090, you get that one terabyte a second. I think these aren't going to be as good. Um, I forgot what the 3080 is. RTX 3080 specs. I think I had this pulled up the other day because I was looking at this. 384-bit bus. That's the 3080 Ti. I want the 3080. Definitely won't be as fast as the 3080 Ti. This always has it listed pretty easily. 760. So yeah, even the 4080, uh, 4080 at 672 gigabytes per second is going to be lower memory bandwidth than the 3080 uh, because they had a 320 bit bus on the 3080. So really, like honestly, you're looking at buying 3080 still from a mining perspective like it's just what is happening with the 40 series is what we saw from amd on the transition from the 6000 series or from the 5000 series to the 6000 series where essentially if you took like a 5700 xt and you took a 6700 xt the 5700 xt made more sense uh from of course a mining perspective uh, i mean it's pretty clear here that we are getting uh, a downgrade uh, from NVIDIA on the mining front, especially for memory intensive algorithms. And it's really not dissimilar to what we saw, like I said, with the 5,000 series to 6,000 series jump. And a part of what is going on with that in particular appears to be the move towards compensating with L2 cache or larger caches. That's my perspective. I'd like to hear your perspective in the comment section below as well. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.